And tonight in News for Your Health, chronic pain is keeping many people up at night. A new poll from the National Sleep Foundation found 57% of Americans cannot sleep because of pain. Those suffering from chronic pain are getting 42 minutes less sleep than others. They say the lack of sleep interferes, I bet it does, with their work, mood, and relationships. Now, how well do you sleep at night? Doctors and researchers would not be surprised if to hear you say not very well at all. But did you know that the lack of sleep is linked to that chronic and acute pain? Now, this is National Sleep Week, a time to discuss the importance of sleep and how to get better Z's every night. Dr. Daniel Erickson is the medical director at the Center for Sleep Medicine at St. Barnabas Hospital. He's also in the studio with us this evening. He is also the author of Sleep 101. Welcome, Dr. Erickson. Thanks for having me. So, why does the pain interfere with sleep? I think it's the simple fact that if you have pain, that pain keeps you from falling asleep comfortably. It also wakes you up frequently during the course of the night. And what type of chronic pain are we talking about? Well, in my practice, I see people with pain all the time. It's patients with chronic uh, lower back pain. It's patients with arthritis, uh, patients with really all, all types of pain have problems with their sleep. Now, acute pain seems to disturb the sleep process less, 14 minutes about as opposed to some 42 minutes or something like that. Why is that? Well, uh, chronic pain may be the type of pain that's harder to treat, whereas acute pain uh, may be something somewhat simpler that you can take an over-the-counter uh, pain medication for and, and treat. So is it no longer true that you can sleep away some pain, or can you still do that? Well, that's uh, a complex question. You know, what I note uh, frequently in my practice is that sleep problems, pain, and uh, problems with mood depression go hand in hand. And now, it's often hard to say what came first. Was it the pain that caused the patient to feel depressed and then he developed insomnia? Did the patient have insomnia that made him more susceptible to pain? It's hard to know. So you develop a vicious cycle there. Let's, let's talk about the environment. Uh, why is the environment so important in terms of your sleep? Let's start first with the room. Well, uh, for sure, the, the environment is, is very important. Exactly why may be hard to answer, but what this study shows and what we know from the past is that uh, you should keep your uh, bedroom environment dark. You should keep the temperature on the cool side. You want to eliminate as much uh, noise as possible. And furthermore, things may look up when you start looking down. That is. What you sleep on is important too. That mattress. That's right. A comfortable mattress may make you sleep better. And it's possible that, that if that mattress is not comfortable, then you're feeling pain in joints or places that you wouldn't ordinarily. It's certainly. And, and the typical symptom to look out for is that if you wake up and you feel achy, you have pains here and there, that go away as the day progresses, that may be a symptom of having a poor ma mattress. Why does your mood uh, change because of the lack of sleep? You know, the specifics of it is, is hard to, to, um, to know, but uh, that is certainly true. Uh, sleep impacts every aspect of your life, and people that sleep less tend to be uh, less productive in terms of work. They have more problems with their relationships, and they're less happy. Sleep makes you happy. Does this in any way play into sleep apnea? Uh, not so much. That is somewhat of a, uh, a different uh, aspect of sleep. Uh, sleep apnea has more uh, uh, to do with keeping your airway open during the course of the night. So when we're dealing with chronic pain and you're trying to get a good night's sleep and you've done all of the things in your room, you've turned yes. out the lights, it's cool, you got a new mattress and you still don't feel comfortable, what do you do? Well, before you seek medical attention, I have one more advice that I want to share with you. Uh, you hear the authors of the recent study, and uh, you hear generally that you should keep the same bedtime every night. But that's hard to do, and also it's not a good advice, because if, let's say, you decide you go to bed at 8 p.m., you may not fall asleep for several hours. It's more important to get up and out of bed at the same time every morning and go to bed when you feel sleepy. Oh, now that's sort of a new twist on things. Get up at the same time every... Well, what if you have to be at work early, let's say? <laughs> or on the weekends, people want to sleep in. Does that disrupt the sleep cycle? Well, I would say this. If you don't have any problems with sleeping, you can sleep in. You can sleep as long as you want. You can spend as much time in bed as you want. Mm -hmm. But if you have problems sleeping, it's more uh, important to adhere to this advice. Get out of the bed 
every time, uh, at the same time every morning, but fall asleep only when you feel really sleepy. All right. Fall asleep only when you're sleepy. That's right. Okay. Thank you so much, doctor. Thanks for being with you us. You got it.